Voice of Destiny brings you your favorite Christian authors, speakers, and filmmakers each week. Listen in as our guests teach and encourage, listeners share their stories, and we go live to the front lines of what God is doing across the world. Now, get ready for the Voice of Destiny. with the Voice of Destiny, and I am absolutely excited about our program today. We have the honor to have Heidi Baker with us on the show today, and uh, I have actually called in to Mozambique, Africa, and she will be joining us any moment right now, but I just wanted to give you some context of what we're talking about. We're talking about the power of one encounter in the presence of God, how it pushes ordinary, everyday people into their destiny, whether it's Moses in the burning bush, Gideon, who thought he was just a weak guy, and then the angel of the Lord told him, no, you are a mighty man, and he went out and accomplished supernatural things, whether it's Jesus meeting the woman at the well in John 4, where this woman had been with lover after lover, and then she encounters Jesus, the lover of her soul. That encounter caused her to be a preacher commissioned to go back into her city and actually see that city revolutionized with the gospel. And, of course, then we have Mary, the mother of Jesus. And that is an example that we'll be talking about. Heidi Baker gives a wonderful parallel um, to Mary, the mother of Jesus, in her new book, Birthing the Miraculous. And really there's such power in saying yes, yes to what God has, yes to the encounter that God wants to give us, and yes to the supernatural life that he wills each of us to live. So it's such a privilege for me to have her on the program today. And just a little bit about Heidi. She founded Iris Global with her husband, Roland. Together they've served as missionaries in Indonesia, Hong Kong, the streets of London. But today we're going to talk about a significant event that took place in her life in 1995 where God called her to Mozambique. But but let me just let you know, the calling of God in her life, it wasn't just uh, I, she was just reading the Bible and this call happened, it, it, although that happens. It wasn't just, oh, I was sitting around and I felt like this might be a good idea. God called her in such a profound and powerful way that it changed and shaped her life forever. So let me check and see if we have her on the line with us. Heidi, are you there? Waiting for her to connect. So um, the key is always positioning ourselves to be used by God. And that is a lifestyle of saying yes to him. That's a lifestyle of laying down our lives for what he wants to do, saying, God, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven and I pray, God, that you would use me as a catalyst. And again, what God typically does is life is going one way. We are moving in one direction, and all of a sudden it seems like out of the blue, everything shifts. Everything changes. One moment, one encounter. And that is the wonderful thing about Heidi's story. You know, many of you I know recognize Heidi Baker as a mother in the faith, as really a revolutionary in the 21st century, her and her husband, Roland, who are out there on the front lines, getting their hands dirty, demonstrating what love and actually the love of Jesus looks like. And um, what I love about their story, I love how it was birthed. I love that moment where God called Heidi and really catapulted her into this incredible where they're seeing thousands of churches established. They're seeing miracles happen, left and right people being raised from the dead. And I know Heidi celebrates all of that. But even more than the miracles, even more than any kind of numerical growth, which we could talk about, Heidi celebrates more than anything the miracle maker, Jesus Christ. So um, just letting Heidi's team know, you guys just let me know when you guys are all set and uh, I will I'll have her right on. So, and you can interrupt me at any point. So, 
we are just getting ready for what God wants to do in a generation. And I, I, I love what he is doing. He is calling people to the front lines. He's calling people out of complacency. He's calling people out of a dreamless life and a dreamless existence as well. And he's calling them into their destiny. So, uh, all right, Heidi, um, just wanted to check and see. Are you Hello. there with us? Hi, Heidi. Yes, yes. Hi. How are you? Oh, I'm good. I'm good. How are you? I I am doing great. Listen, I I know we have a short time together today. I just wanted to let you know it is such an honor and a privilege to have you on the program with us. Oh, bless you. Thank you. Thanks well, for having I, us. We're we're out in in Pemba and in flooding all over the place but we're praying for people and it's a it's a crazy situation but good time for god to move he can do something well we will we will definitely be praying for you we'll be praying that god would just use you and your team in a mighty way to minister to this people just practically and powerfully and uh you know he's He's obviously called you guys to the front lines, and that's what I wanted to talk to. You, what I wanted to talk to you today about Heidi is um, your your new book, Birthing the Miraculous. I think that's going to be such a catalyst for so many people. It's going to stir up their hunger to experience God in a new way. Today, I wanted to talk to you specifically about that one encounter that you had with God back in 1995 that really catapulted you to, into where you are. So let me ask you this. Can you tell us, tell our listeners, a little bit about your story, your ministry, before 1995 mm-hmm. had this encounter with God? What, what was ministry like for you at Roland? Yes. Um, well, I think the first encounter was 96, the, one I, the main okay. one where I saw Jesus and his body and his blood. Um, yes. So what happened, I was powerfully saved at 16 and filled with Holy Spirit, and and God just really called me, uh, the only time I've ever heard an audible voice, to go to Africa, Asia, and England, and and just to be united to him as we're all called just to be married to Jesus. It was so powerful, and, and uh, I took off with my husband um, to Indonesia when I was 20 years old. I was married, and and uh, went off to the mission field. And we were such hard workers. We would just work and work and work and try so hard and pour our lives out. But we just saw very little fruit. Um, we only planted three churches. We only saw three churches planted in wow. um, about 18 years. And then God just crashed in during um, a revival meeting in Canada when I was exhausted and wanted to quit, didn't want to be a missionary, Uh, loved Jesus, but didn't want to do missions at all. We were, we were being shot out. We were, you know, they were really persecuting our kids and it was so hard. And I just said, God, I love you, but I don't want to do missions. And then I, I, God totally, um, poured his spirit out on me and I I fell out in the spirit and I saw like this went on forever just thousands and thousands and thousands of children and as I'm standing here um, in this flood right now looking at children everywhere I'm thinking this is definitely part of the vision I saw Um, and the Lord spoke to me very, very clearly. I saw his eyes, and they're like burning eyes. They're so full of love. They're just burning eyes of fiery love. And they just pour out. They pour out on us, and and his love just pours out on us. And I saw him, but I I didn't want to say yes to whatever he was asking because I was so overwhelmed. And when I was seeing all these kids, I thought, I can't do this. This is just too much. 
And then Jesus took a piece of his body, just ripped it out of his side, ripped it out, and his eyes were so beautiful, but his body was so broken, and it was just so bruised. And he ripped this piece of his flesh out, and he handed it to me, and I thought, I, I can't, I, I don't know what to do with that. It was just, it was a piece of flesh in this vision. Mm-hmm. And he looked at me with those eyes of burning love, and he said, feed it to the children. And I stretched out my hand to the first child, and I mean, I'm just here right now as I'm speaking to you, surrounded by children in this flood zone, right next to our children's village. And I'm thinking of this vision as I'm speaking to you, and wow. I'm watching these kids just walking across this flood, and, and it's situation that's beyond um this is beyond what you can imagine and and jesus said just feed this body feed this to the children and and as i reached out my hand to the first child um the body of jesus turned into bread and and i just it just turned into bread and as it turned into bread (laughs) <laughs> it's so cool because the kids are taking my hand right now as I'm just oh. sharing this again. And um, Whoa. So it turned into bread, and mm. then Jesus looked at me, and he didn't even say anything. It was like heart to heart, face to mm. face, heart to heart. Hi. And he just looked at me, and he said it was a cup of I'm just meeting a, a, one of the girls that go to our school walking through the flood water. Ho! Oh, and he said, it's a cup of, of suffering and of joy. Will you drink it? Mm. And I drank that cup. I drank that cup, and I drank the cup of suffering, which for me, I wish you could see. Um, I wish you could see what where we are right now, what's going on right right as I'm speaking to you. Because we are right now drinking that cup. Wow. Whoa. Suffering is seeing what Jesus sees. And I'm seeing houses immersed in water. I'm seeing people walking through totally polluted water and and just bizarre craziness around me. And yet there's wow. hope. There's yeah. hope because the cup is suffering and joy. And it was blood and water that flowed from Jesus' side. And I thought, how do you give that to children? How do you give blood and water to children? I just knew that I had to had to give it to them. And I reached out my hand with this cup, and it was a poor man's cup. I just reached my hand out, and that, that blood and water turned into drink for the wow. children. And for hours and hours, I just continued to give this cup. And the Lord said to suffer with him is to see what he sees, like we're seeing right now, um, Mm. a lot of suffering. And to bring joy with him, to to carry the joy with him is also what we're seeing right now. And that is hope. Hope that there's always enough. And that's what he said to me. He said to me two times, there's always enough because I died. And that's why instead of just running away in a situation like this with mamas around, you know, skinny mamas and and kids and rags and houses underwater, instead of running away, it's like I believe there's always enough. I really believe because Jesus died, there's enough. Because Jesus died, we we can believe him. And so that vision changed my life, and we went from three churches in our movement to over 10,000, and Mm. we went from 320 kids to caring for probably close to 20,000 children now in villages and schools and children's centers. So everything changed from that day, and we've never said no to a hungry child. (laughs) Heidi, let me ask you you this question. Just as you were talking – you guys, even right now, as we're ta- as we are speaking, um, are, are dealing with some pretty overwhelming odds. You guys, and for all of our listeners, if you at all familiar mm-hmm. with, with Heidi's testimony, her ministry, it reads like something out of the New Testament, out of the life of Paul. I mean, 
being persecuted, being put in jail, being shot at, all that. But Heidi, let me ask you this. When you have an encounter with God, whether it's the encounter that you had with God in Toronto or just where you experience this, the manifest, tangible presence of the Lord, how do encounters with God equip you to deal with what you have to do on a daily basis? Um, uh, they carry you through. I mean, the, obviously, the Word of God carries us through. Um, the, Epa, no entra la bolsa, bolsa, Paulo. I'm, I, I want my kids out of that crazy, polluted water. Um, it carries you through because you just, instead of being overwhelmed by the circumstances, you're overwhelmed by the love of God. You're overwhelmed yeah. by by your intimate relationship with a loving, living God. Yes. So yep. when I look at this flood, um, instead of saying, well, it's hopeless and we have too much on our plate and we can't do anything about it, I just I just look at it and say, okay, what do you want to do, God? What's your mm. plan, Jesus? What, what do you have yes. in your heart, Holy Spirit? And... You can hear the kids, like they're full of faith. Yeah. They want to go and help people. They want to go. These are little 10, 12 year olds saying, We'll go, we'll help, we'll pray. Mm. Seriously, it's not just me. Wow. It's, it's, a, it's now a movement of, of yes. children, African children, Asian children, Westerners, Easterners, South Americans. And we're all saying, We'll stop for the one. We'll first yes. stop for the one. Wow. Who is the one, Jesus, will stop and adore him and worship him. And then we'll stop for the one in front of us. You know, we're not we're not supposed to stop for a thousand every day. We just everybody love the one in front of them. Pour yeah. kindness out, pour love out. And all of that comes just through encounters with a living God, through just being yeah. on my face and sometimes just daddy God loving me and saying no, he loves me for who I am, not for yeah. what I do. And that's that's huge because that just makes me want to <laughs> go out and do all the more, you know, because I'm yeah. in love. And yeah. our, our children are in love. That's why we're unstoppable. You know, that's why we. Yeah. That's why we're not we're not overwhelmed by this by this suffering. Well, I... We know Jesus is alive. Yes, yes, well, and, and Javi, I just want to encourage our, our listeners for a minute. The wonderful thing about reading anything that Heidi writes, like her new book, Birthing the Miraculous, any of her material, is that really it takes theology, because over in the West, and you know this, Heidi, by coming over here, um, we have a lot of great teaching. We have incredible teaching, but I think God wants to take our theology and make it reality, put hands and feet to what we believe and. You know, Heidi deals with this on a daily basis, and I believe her stuff will encourage you to do that. So, Heidi, w- 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 let me ask you this, because you, you went and got your Ph.D. in systematic theology, so you have you have studied the Word. You love the Word of God. Why is it important for us to take what we know, what the Bible says, and just live it out and actually believe what the Word says is true for every day, everyday life? I think we owe it to the world to show them the living God that we know. I mean, Holy Spirit wants to live in us, but he also wants to flow out of us. And I just believe the book. You know, the people in this movement, we believe the book. He's alive. He's not a clockmaker God. You know, I studied Mm -hmm. 10 years of theology uh, at a secular university for four years. And there's this idea he's a clockmaker God. He just wound up the world and let it go. And I mm. say he's a God who's alive. He's yes. a God who's alive and able and in action. And and I I believe that God can do anything. Um, yeah. I believe he can turn water into wine. We can walk on water. We can raise the dead in Jesus' name. We can see blind eyes open and deaf ears hear. And, and we see God do Miracles yeah. on on a daily basis. Not just me. I'm one little tiny person in in this move. I'm one little tiny piece of a puzzle. But all of us are seeing it. 
children will watch God move, um, teenagers, adults, all different um, nationalities. We just believe God, and he's, he's literally healing, turning white eyes brown. He's opening deaf mm. ears. He's giving us this passion to, to care for the poorest of the poor, to, to run into war zones and flood zones and famine zones and say, Jesus is alive and he's going to help yeah. us. He's transformed the way we think. We, mm. we really know he's alive. The word is true. The Bible is yeah. true. And yeah. we're in love with the one, the one who inspired every page of it. We're in love with them. We're so in love <laughs> with them. That's why we're out here in the rain again. <laughs> yes. We're out here, you know, talking to you because we care about you too and the people listening. You know, we well, really care that you understand. Oh, the beauty well, of I, <laughs> let, let me let me ask you this question. Just just as you're sharing this, um, you know, I, I, over here in the West, again, there there tend to be so many distractions, and but I, I think deep down, for those who have the Holy Spirit living inside them, they do really want to live hungry for God. Heidi, what are some things that you do in your personal life that help you just stay hungry for God? Before you answer. I remember listening to you. You shared at Bethel, and you your message. To, I love how you prepare your messages. You really just ask Holy Spirit to uh, to give you whatever He wants to okay. share, and you share it. And uh, the message was was sat. It was something being satisfied and yet ravenously hungry. And I love that concept mm-hmm. because He satisfies us, but He also leaves us always hungry for more. So, how what would you say to people? Uh, how do you keep yourself hungry for God? How do you stay that way? I, I actually stay hungry for God by being in his presence and letting him love me, just letting him love on me, and then by loving the one in front of me, which mm. turns into two, which turns into a hundred or 10,000 or a hundred thousand, by stepping into disaster zones and yeah. situations mm. that are beyond hope and and yeah. looking at it just right now looking at what I'm looking at um watching people brave through this water and mm. and watching houses that are crumbling down and 300 year old tree that's broken and saying okay I'm hungry for more like I need mm. more of God and I need him to pour out his power and presence on all these people here by yeah. looking at war zones, looking at, at the, at mm. Europe where people have fallen away from God. So, so many of them and, and say, God, you're alive. I'm so hungry yeah. for more. I'm so yeah. hungry for more. I mm. have to have more of God. Is that mm. I want more for myself, but I, I also want to see every man, woman, and child on the face of the planet know who our daddy is, who our daddy yes. God is, and that he's alive and that he's in love with them. So I am, I'm probably the, you can argue with me, anybody, <laughs> I'm one of the hungriest people on the planet. I really mm. am. I'm so desperate for God. I, I don't care what it takes to get closer. Mm. I just want more of him. I just mm. want him. I want him for, I want him for all these kids. I want him for, for the poor. I want him for the rich who are poor in disguise. I just want more of God. And I want mm. him to, to pour out his presence and so that, that there would be hundreds of thousands of laid down lovers that would do anything. Um, that would just do anything to carry his love. That's, mm. that's what I, why I'm so hungry. What, I'm desperate. What, what, Heidi? What, one one thing that um just I, what, one thing that struck me in your book and it was earlier on in the book and I I think we'll end with this is I, I really believe you know there are many people who are listening either currently or who are going to be listening to this in the archive and God has put extraordinary things in their hearts just like He did with you and Roland He's He's given them dreams He's He's given them visions and one of my one of my favorite little stories we tell in the book is where you um you talk about where you were at Southern you were at Southern California College which was now, which is now Vanguard and uh there was a guy who was talking about God giving him a city and at first you thought oh well I don't I don't know about that 
But then, you know, by the end of the story, I love what you said. You said, it seemed to me that if God could give somebody a city, he could also give someone a nation. And um, Heidi, would you yeah. mind, just, uh, just out of that revelation, just out of what you learned through that, going from, well, I don't know if God can give somebody a city, to I want a nation, would you mind praying for our listeners? Because... For those of you guys out there who are listening to us, I know God's put dreams in your heart. I know God's given you vision. I know God has things preordained and predestined and planned for you to do big things that are beyond your ability to accomplish, but through his power and his presence and that encounter with him, I believe you can do it. Would you mind, Heidi, just praying for our listeners to see those things released in their life that they yeah. would first have around us? Oh, yeah. Let's have... I'm going to have all the kids that are with me praying for you guys, too. I'm going to pray on speaker. Thank you, Jesus. Come on. Hallelujah. God, we just pray. All, these mamas who have lost their homes, too, right now, they're praying for yeah. you. That oh. you would be hungry. That you would be thirsty for the living God. That God would put mm. desperation in your heart. That you would carry the dreams of God to full full promise. That you would carry the the glory of God. That you would pay the price. Orara vosis in English. Whoa, shake araba. We just pray for you. We pray for you that are listening. That God would just just come. That God would come and and allow you to carry the promises. And that you would never ever give up. That you would never ever give up. We pray for yes. tenacity. We pray yes. for love. We pray for power. We pray for anointing. We pray that nobody, nobody would abort their promises. That they would just say, it doesn't matter what it costs. It doesn't matter what I pay. I will carry what you put in me, God, mm. to full term. And I will birth the promises. And I will mm. see that which you called me to come to fruition, God. I don't care how much I'm stretched. Lord, let them pray that prayer. I don't care what it costs. I don't care how much how much I'm stretched, how much I'm pushed. I even say, Lord, yes to whatever suffering I need to pass through, God, mm. to get mm. to the other side. Sure. And, and, it's, and it's just right now, I feel prophetically, as, as these people are walking from one side of this, of this flood to the other, it's like they're risking their lives to get to the other side. They have mm. to eat. Because they have to, they have to survive, and so they're walking through this flood water. And I, I just pray that that kind of desperation for the real living food would cause people yeah. to walk through the flood, walk through the storms, walk through the difficulties, and believe God that they are going to get to the other side, that they are going to make it, and they're going to be successful because of who you are. Mm. Because you're alive and well, and your love yeah. is in the Lord. So, we just pray this in the name of Jesus. In the yeah. name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. All, 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 all of your beautiful children. Thank you, Ty. We need that. So grateful. Jesus. <laughs> well, just, just letting all Bless of our you. listeners. Well, thank you, I, letting all of our listeners know. Bless the book is called Birthing the Miraculous. It's available where any book, ever books are sold. Amazon, Barnes and Noble, Books a Million. You can also get Compelled by Love and her other book, Beautiful One, which is a compilation book. You will be blessed. For more information about Heidi, go to irisglobal.org. Heidi, such an honor to have you on the show today. Oh, thank you. It was an honor to speak with you, and, and we just really bless you guys and pray you're all filled up. And stay hungry. Yes. Stay yes. hungry for yes. Jesus and be satisfied by the beauty of who he is. Mm. Well, thank you, Heidi. And we'll be praying yeah. for you guys. Uh-huh. We'll be praying for you and your team and for everybody in this whole flood zone. Thank that God you. will be there and that you would see him move mightily and do incredible, extraordinary things. Yes, Lord. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so Thanks. much. Bless you Thanks, guys. Thanks, Heidi. We love you. Hope we talk to you again. 
Love you, too. Ciao. Ciao, ciao.